Hey, 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 happy day 616 of What's She Up To Now. Sharon Hornell from here, also known as Pajama Grandma. And I, oh, it's, I mean, I'm kind of struggling today. I stayed up way too late working with a coaching student to like, oh. it's just way past my bedtime since I usually get up at four o'clock in the morning. Staying up till midnight is hard on me. I used to be able to go on four hours sleep. I don't know how I did it, but in my, 20s and 30s and 40s up until 50 when I dropped dead which is probably because I never slept enough or partially because of that uh, and I was running through my life I, I four hours sleep was fine I seemed to be able to function I, I seemed to be able to function fine on it but now I know I need more than four hours sleep a night and so I'm a little tired this morning and it's got me thinking about how we measure success how I measure success and it's partly from the conversation I was having with a coaching student because he's like, you know, when you talk about certain topics, I can hear it in your voice and I believe you. I know that you're interested in that and you care about that. We were talking about health. I'm doing a, the blood pressure challenge. And when I talk about the blood pressure challenge, he's like, well, would you care if you help people with their blood pressure? And I'm like, well, maybe not blood pressure per se, but I do care when I help people to live a better life, to be more who they are, to be healthier. And healthier means physically, mentally, spiritually, financially, health in all areas of, of your life and of their life. I said, yes, yes, I would feel better. He said, I believe you. I can, I can hear that in your voice. But when you talk about business, uh, I don't hear that from you as much. And I'm like, I thought that was really interesting because I think I'm this big to help people from offline to online business person and da 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 and processes and systems. And yeah, I've, I've done that for decades. <coughs> and it got me thinking about and wondering and pondering because he's right when I talk about those things I am not nearly as energized or excited about those topics as I am and helping people and, and I do it every day but I'm not as excited to help people do those things until I get to the point where I can help them understand that continuously improving themselves and becoming the best version of themselves and the person that they can be uh, is is a true measure of success now I guess I guess I just answered my own question. How do we measure success? I measure success in how I feel helping others to feel joy and happy and success. And success is, to me, is more now, and it was just my very different definition of success than I had even five years ago, is how much joy am I getting out of what I'm doing? It just isn't that interesting. How much joy am I getting out of what I'm doing and how is it making me feel versus, you know, the old, how much money am I making? Am I making, you know, eight figures, nine figures? Am I making, you know, X percentage? Am I increasing my sales year over year, month over month, day over day, whatever? Uh, <coughs> I, that used to motivate me. Money used to motivate me and it's really kind of stark and interesting that money doesn't motivate me at all right now. I mean, not, not at all, but pretty much not at all. And that's, that's interesting. I, I want to say it's sad, but it's not really sad because money is just paper, right? And I am finally at the point in my life where I'm not motivated by paper anymore. What does that have to say? About, I mean, what does that say about us as a, as a race when we're motivated by achieving paper or we're motivated by achieving numbers in a bank account? I will admit that numbers in my bank account maybe it would make me smile for a minute but for the most part it doesn't last it's very fleeting it's it's the joy it's the experiences it's the relationships it's the people that I impact and the people who I've been a part of their lives and they, they are better people for me having met them or been there I, I want to leave everybody on I meet better for having come in contact with me and I would say that in the past, I don't think I've necessarily had that conscious thought that that was even important to me. And that, you know, I guess I've always wanted to make the world a better place underneath and I never understood where that desire came from. But maybe that's it. Maybe I just want people to be better off because they were exposed to me or they came in contact with me. And that's my definition of success. Not, you know, am I making $100,000 a day? Am I making a million dollars a day? Who cares? And you know who knows about it, and who cares? Even if even if I was, who, I'm not telling anybody. So who cares? It's funny. So what is your measure of success? How do you 
define success. You know, you can share it in a direct message or let's have a chat about it. I'm really curious how other people define success. And if you and your definition of success have changed over time, or if you feel like, hey, I've always wanted to make a million dollars a month and I still want to make a million dollars a month. And to me, I'm not successful until I make a million dollars a month. It's interesting. I remember learning this from Tony Robbins probably is one of the first people I consciously remember learning it from. The whole how we define success. And I, he was coaching a gentleman or telling a story about a gentleman who made you know, serious millions of dollars and had all these amazing things in his life, yet he didn't feel like he was a success because his definition of success was he had to do A, B, C, D, and they were like so out there that Tony's like, you're never gonna achieve that until you change your definition of success. You're never gonna feel successful if you're always reaching for it and it's always out of your reach. You can feel successful right now by changing how you define success. So today, let's take a minute or two and just define exactly what success is to you. I'm gonna do what it is for me, I want you to do it for what it is for you. Let's quickly talk, I can hear my granddaughter upstairs, so let's quickly talk about the BP Challenge today is top 10 things that you love to do, physically do, action verbs. And I got excited about that, I've already got mine done for the day. I did it when I was thinking of the idea for the topic for today, so that means it's a good topic if you can knock it out that fast, or if I can knock it out that fast. Uh, getting ready for my traveling, and maybe that's why my mind's a little unfocused and discombobulated, but it happens to me anyway, I'll be honest. So if there's anything I can help you with, go ahead, hit me up in the comments below or send me a direct message if you've got a question about the challenge, anything about challenges. I'm kind of the challenge queen, not kind of, I am the challenge queen. I've done and overcome and, and shared and led and taught challenges and different challenges in all different links and all different strategies for decades now. Of course, it was before they were called challenges. They were just obstacles and shit that happened in our life that we had to deal with. <laughs> Well, to continue existing, uh, but now they're called challenges. I think challenges is a better name. I love the the, na the word challenge instead of obstacles or problems or you know things like that. Challenges to me are positive. To a lot of people, challenges aren't positive, but to me, challenges are positive. It means I see it, I see the thing, and I'm going to achieve what I want. You know, in addition to this challenge, this is just a little speed bump along the way. So working on that. If I can help you in any way, share in the comments below. I will, of course, be with you tomorrow.